very happy to welcome all of you to this uh, uh, to this school uh, uh, on uh, uh, Adron Physics and. Uh, this is the 10th edition of the school at GGI. And uh, it's a pity that I cannot uh, welcome you in Florence. Uh, I remember two years ago, uh, we just started the school with the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, I never would expect that uh, after two years, uh, we, we will be still in this situation. Uh, I really hope this is the last edition that we, we have to run online. And I'd like to thank uh, the organizers and the lecturers uh, to accept uh, to give lectures and organize this edition in this uh, uh, special format. And also, uh, I'd like to thank uh, all the students for attending the school. I think this, is, uh, this will be a great opportunity for you, even if it is online. And uh, we will try to uh, gather all the materials to collect videos, uh, slides, uh, and uh, all uh, you will need also in future if you want to see again the lectures. But please uh, take advantage of the discussions of the school which, because these are really helpful for you. So that's all. From my side, I thank again all the organizers. Elena uh, will explain the details about the school. So let's thank the, the director of the GGI school, Stefania De Curtis. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like, on behalf of all, of all, all the other organizers, I would like to, to thank all the students. Uh, and uh, also the, the professor that accepted to, to be lecturer to, uh, to our school. Um, the first week will be dedicated to uh, the hot topic of the exotic hadrons. Uh, practically now, each two, three months, there is a, a new discovery. And, um, and uh, Professor Maiani will speak of, uh, to us about that. Then there will be the topic um, of the um, dark matter by explained house by, by Ringwald. And, uh, and uh, um, we was, uh, in, in the same week, we will start also to speak about the, the structure of, uh, of the nucleum with uh, Marcus Biel and the partner distribution function. Um, and then I will give um, the, we, we speak also uh, Sergio Scopetta about uh, the, the second week. Now I would like to introduce you the, the famous Professor Maiani. He has uh, written a piece of his, the history of physics since uh, he has uh, predicted the existence of the charm quark uh, with the Glacian and Heliopolis before his discovery. He has been uh, the um, uh, CERN Council President, then Director General of CERN, uh, INFN President, so, and, uh, he, and many other things. And uh, it is uh, really uh, a honor for us to have him here at this school. So thank you very much. Let's start, please. Okay. <clears throat> thank you, Elena, and thank you, uh, Stefania. I'm very glad to, to make this, uh, le these lectures about uh, the exotic hadrons, particularly I'm very glad to give them here, here in Florence. In fact, at the moment I am in CERN, but uh, my, my plan was to take my car and uh, come down to Florence uh, for this occasion. It's a pity that we cannot see each other, but anyway, we try to, to overcome that. So mm, my lectures, will cover uh, this argument, the argument that are here, the, the, the first lecture to the, now, this, this hour will be just uh, an overall panorama of the, of the exotic hadrons. And then we will go into more detailed um, subject. The first is of course, the constituent quark model for the masses of conventional mesons and baryons. This is a, a tool by which we got convinced that more or less we could understand the, the, the complicated st structure of these particles. And then what we are trying to do with uh, several colleagues is to apply similar methods 
to the new exotic hadrons. The, then I will discuss uh, the, the line which I'm most uh, been working, uh, which is the, 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 the tetraquarks, so-called compact tetraquarks, and the comparison with the, with the alternative model, which has been considered also by many people, which is that of hadron molecules. An important part of my, my talk will be to show that the, the exotic hadrons that we know uh, follow a path which, is, uh, which has the same symmetries as mesons and baryons. This seems to be an obvious thing, but it is not so obvious, in particular in comparison with the hadron molecules story, which uh, deals with forces which, which are not flavor invariant like uh, color forces. Uh, the X3872 has been the first uh, exotic hadrons to be discovered and still is the object of many, many subjects. I will discuss that in lecture uh, four and five. Uh, and, uh, in, besides the constituent quark model, there have been other theoretical methods to, to deal with, the, with this uh, subject. One is the born oppenheimer approximation, which uh, has been useful long ago to, uh, as a fir first tool to, to understand the molecules and, uh, the, the, I mean, molecules, atomic molecules. And, uh, and this, uh, uh, we have tried to apply that to double charm, baryons, and tetraquarks, and I will show some results. Another mm, theoretical tool is the multi quark, the, 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 uh, the, the QCD with n colors in the limit n equal infinity. I will try to, to give you a flavor of what uh, has been uh, the story there. Uh, there are not really results, but uh, it's an interesting uh, tool that uh, it's good to, to have in mind. And then I will go to the last uh, subject on which we have been working, that is a way to find quantitative um, quantitative criteria um, for to understand the difference between a compact state and the, and the molecular state. And uh, it is interesting that uh, we, we, we have rediscovered here uh, a, 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 an old paper by Steven Weinberg, a very clever paper in which he posed himself a, a, a question that at the time was totally out uh, of uh, the mainstream, that is, uh, is the deuterium a, a bound state uh, of two nucleons or is an elementary particle? We will find the same um, problem here, and uh, I will try to show you how one can quantitatively um, uh, face this, uh, this problem. Uh, I, I will, uh, <coughs> I hope we, this, uh, this lecture will open up a discussion between, between us and uh, uh, please uh, interrupt uh, whenever you have a question or, or something that uh, I, you do not understand. And uh, this subject will be taken over also in, the, in, the, in parallel exercises and uh, we, we have uh, Alessandro Pilloni um, um, in parallel to my lectures, and also, I, I guess, an, a collaborator of uh, Elena Santo Pinto will take over the last day. So now, let's come to the to the main subject, and I would like to start with a famous sentence written by uh, Moray Gelman in his paper, in which he proposed uh, that uh, uh, mesons and baryons. Uh, are made of elementary constituents that he called quark. And his proposal was to say that uh, all mesons should have been mm, pairs of quark and a quark, and all baryons, that was the real novelty of, of the scheme, all baryons had to be made by combinations of three quarks. But of course, he said there may be other combinations. For instance, for baryons, they may be three quarks and an additional pair of quarks. And for meson, there will be 
two quarks, uh, a pair of quarks, and an additional pair of quarks. We are used now to call these states pentaquarks for the baryons and tetraquarks for the meson. Of course, the Gelman said that just to show that, uh, of course, this was one possibility, but uh, it is clear that the focus was on the simplest uh, configurations, quark, antiquark, and three quarks. But also one can say, how can we say what is the number of quarks which are inside an hadron? This in field theory, this is not so well-defined story because a strong interaction may cause additional pairs to appear and disappear. And so in which sense can we say that uh, um, a, a, a particle is a tetraquark and not a, a, a quark antiquark state. Uh, um, it, for, light, for light quarks, the, the issue is very difficult. But uh, there is uh, one thing that uh, we have learned that uh, in the basic strong interaction theory, which is QCD, it forces at short distance become less uh, important. And so it is more difficult if this is the theory of the strong interaction, to create or destroy a, a pair of uh, heavy quarks. Heavy means uh, mass which much larger than the typical uh, scale, mass scale of QCD, which is about uh, 350 MeV or orientatively. So even a pair of charm is difficult to create and difficult to destroy. That, that means that if you see a particle which decays into a charmonium, psi or eta or whatever, the, the, there was in the original hadron a pair CC bar. And if it happens that the original particle had an electric charge, then there is no way out. This particle had to contain a CC bar pair or a BB bar pair and a pair of additional light quarks. This composition is what we call valence composition. And then, of course, you may add virtually other pairs, but, uh, but this is the basic valence uh, constitution. And the real fact, uh, interesting, which uh, um, started um, in not much more than 10 years ago, is that particles of this kind have been found particles which have a pair of heavy quarks and, uh, and are electrically charged. These are the, the exotic mesons that we call X, Y, Z, as you will see, and uh, also the pentaquark. In fact, to reply to, to, to follow the argument of, of uh, Moore Gelman, uh, we do have evidence that there are uh, state, multi-quark states. And the real problem is how to understand the internal structure of this particle and how to describe them with the, the real only theory that we have at the end uh, today, which is uh, a QCD. The first hypothesis of tetraquarks was done by Jaffe, and you will see that as a model of the lightest scalar models. And, uh, and uh, uh, but then uh, tetraquarks are more easy identified, as I said, uh, at the increase of quark mass. Hidden charm and beauty have been uh, discovered first, uh, but uh, we go to a long list of discoveries which continued. Uh, the last have been in the in the 2021, and uh, it is. Uh, 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 particles with hidden flavor and uh, open strangeness, which is a very interesting uh, particle indeed. At the beginning, the new particles were neutral, and uh, they were, so to say, they were classified as unexpected charmonia. And uh, this was the, the, the still controversial X3872, which uh, in fact was discovered in 2003. So, long ago. Um, here you see a figure which uh, has a, 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 the series of resonances, which are resonances of BB bar. This is a beautiful bell picture. And it reminds the old time 
uh, of spectroscopic lines in which you could have a, a good description of the spectroscopic lines. And if there was a line which was not in your list, uh, that was called an unexpected line. And many new elements have been discovered in this way. So this is why the first exotic resonances uh, with the quantum number of Charmonia uh, uh, that have been discovered were called X and were called unanticipated Charmonia. And uh, they were called uh, as uh, X, typically neutral, positive, uh, positive parity particles, uh, zero plus plus, etc., decaying into J psi plus pions. Then there were the Y particles, neutral, seen in the plus and minus annihilation, uh, via the, the initial state radiation mechanism. That is, you have an e plus e minus pair which radiates uh, a photon and uh, reduces its mass. And of course, uh, if there is a resonance at a certain mass, it is more prob probable to irradiate a, a photon which brings the e plus e minus pair to on top of the resonance. And this is why the first one, the Y4260, was discovered in Babar and then was confirmed in other experiments. And then the Z particles are those which, uh, as I said, have a charmon as a CC bar pair in, in them, but they are electrically charged. The first one uh, discovered was the Z, so-called Z4430, but uh, it was not at the time so clear that uh, that was uh, really a particle. And the first, uh, the first, uh, particle of this kind, uh, which was uh, discovered in, uh, was discovered in 2013, uh, is the Z3900 and Z4020. You will see them. I will des describe them. Then, then uh, we found also particles which have a hidden charm and a hidden charm strangeness. That is, uh, particles decay into psi plus phi. And of course, these also are an, a clear example of a four quark particle, two is a CC bar and the SS bar states. Last year, there was a, another step is the discovery of particle which has a valence uh, composition of CC bar and US bar. They have one unpaired strange quark. And there were, there are at the moment two of them. One is, uh, it was discovered by BES-3, uh, the Beijing uh, Electron Positron Collider. Z plus ZS, 3985, which decays into Psi plus K bar, K plus. And uh, shortly after, another one was discovered by LC LSCB, Z plus uh, CS4003, also decaying into Psi, psi K star, K plus. And, um, um, you will see uh, in, in a moment uh, the picture, and uh, it is quite convincing that uh, although they are very close in mass, these are two different, uh, two different particles. Finally, in, uh, in, uh, in 2020, uh, four charm tetraquarks have been seen, resonances which decay into pairs of psi particles. In this case, they must contain four quarks for heavy quarks. And the last, uh, last uh, uh, born in this family is the double charm tetra quark with, with the valence uh, composition, two charm uh, states and a pair of light antiquarks, uh, anti uh, something that decays into D0, D0 pi plus, is the, called the T plus uh, 3875. Uh, this is a, a, a very nice um, diagram which shows what I said before that is a well known spectrum inter, with inter, interspersed, uh, uh, un unanticipated, or unexpected charmonium. This is a spectrum of charmonium, and uh, in yellow are uh, established CC bar states predicted by the theoretical calculation. 
in gray, you have uh, uh, states which belong to the Charmonium series are predicted, but still not detected. And then in, in, in red and purple are the unexpected states. And uh, um, the first one was the 3872, as I said, and then uh, there was the 4430. And uh, when it was discovered in 2007, we, we noted that the difference in mass with, of this, these two, of the 3872 and 4430 is about 500 MeV. And we made the hypothesis this uh, to be the, the excited, the radial, first radial excitation of a state uh, very close to 3872 and with opposite charge conjugation. That was done in, in uh, 2007. And as I said, in 2013, two of these particles have been discovered. And in fact, the 3900 is precisely 500 GV, uh, 500 MeV is uh, lighter than the 4430. So uh, that's the third case of, uh, uh, of unexpected. And uh, we could start building a multiplet in, uh, in, this, uh, in this thing, in this business. And then there are others unexpected, which can feel uh, 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 the same multiplet I will discuss later on. This is the 4430. This resonance was discovered by Bell in, uh, in, uh, in uh, 2008. Uh, and uh, you see here the, the picture. This is the, 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 the mass square uh, psi uh, pi. And uh, you, you see a, a beautiful peak. Uh, however, uh, an experiment by Babar could reproduce a similar structure with a similar peak simply by adding up resonances in the other channel. And uh, that uh, gave a lot of doubts whether uh, this uh, was a real resonance or was just a reflection of resonances in the other channel. But uh, then came LHCB with a beautiful confirmation of the, the resonance uh, 4430. And uh, also LHCB was able to do the argon plot of the, of the resonance, uh, showing that it's a real bona fide um, resonance, uh, a very, very, very conventional one. But of course, very exotic because it has to have a, a, a a, a, a pair of charm quark and uh, and uh, a, another pair of light quarks. So it's a it's a really bona fide tetra quark. These are the resonances that uh, I mentioned before. The the Z plus uh, uh, at uh, thirty nine hundred that was seen almost at the same time by best three by Clio by 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 Bell and by Clio in the United States. And also uh, all, all, uh, all uh, uh, collaborations and also evidence for not only the charged variants, but also the neutral variants, the, the, the Z0 uh, 3900. So uh, it, it has definitely isospin uh, equal to one and, uh, and um, not, not, not zero. This is the other. Uh, 4020, the other uh, resonance at uh, around uh, uh, one plus uh, at around the same mass, and that decays into HC plus pion. So it is again another negative charge conjugation. Um, it is an, another negative charge conjugation uh, state like the 3900. These are the the ex the the more prominent and the lightest uh, exotic resonances. Uh, then we go to the Y states. Uh, I'm putting here a picture by, by BEST3. The 4260, BEST3 has evidence, as you see in the first, first uh, uh, diagram on the, on the, on the left, uh, is that this, in fact, is a resonance made by two 
two very close uh, resonance to each other. And uh, we don't really know how many Y particles are there. There are resonance that still uh, come and go. And uh, best three has uh, four states, uh, but uh, perhaps uh, there is an, another one at lower energy and, uh, and they may be composite, etc. So uh, this is a, 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 an argument which is still fluid. These are uh, possible scenarios for the Y states. Um, I don't want to, to, to stay more on that. I, I will not discuss that in, the, in, in any detail. Then we come to the really surprising um, discovery, uh, LHCB, of a pentaquark, that is a, a state which is seen in the decay of lambda b, lambda b decay into k minus plus j psi plus a proton. But uh, the, the, real, the, the, the real exciting thing is that j psi proton have a totally non-trivial spectrum with, with at least three resonances. This is also still a very fluid argument and uh, I will not discuss very much, but uh, just to say that uh, pentaquarks are the first example of what uh, Gelman would have said about barium, a state which has barium number equal to one, but that on top of three quarks as another additional a pair of quarks that make it um, a, a, a pentaquark. This is the latest double charm tetraquark. is a is a particle that decays into d mesons, but with the same charm. So it has charm equal to two. Uh, d star d star zero d plus or or d star plus d zero, and is very close to this uh, to this uh, threshold and. Uh, uh, it's uh, uh, been discovered in, in uh, last year. Uh, I, I would like to discuss now what I call the new wave of exotics. What, what, I, what we, uh, we have seen until now can be analyzed either in terms of uh, multi-quarks or in terms of molecular states. That is, a a states which are made of two existing uh, meson and, and baryon states. But then there are others, a new wave, as I said, uh, which started in, in 2016, which uh, is a particle which cannot be described in this way. And uh, uh, they really represent uh, a, an exotics into the exotics. The first one was uh, the resonances that decay into five psi. Five psi are two strange objects because they are done both by heavy quarks. And of course, you, you cannot uh, compose them in a, in a molecular state. And, uh, and uh, this is it. And uh, the, 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 the LACB produced a spectrum which contained four such resonances. I will come back to that uh, later. Um, and then, even more exotic, uh, this is a spectrum of uh, deep psi resonances. That is, uh, you, you take the four muon, the, the collision which lead to four muons, uh, take the events in which uh, the, mu, the, four, the two muon pairs uh, have the mass, each a mass of a psi, and then you make the spectrum and this is it. And you see there is a very prominent uh, resonance at, uh, at uh, 6,900. 6, and there may be many others, maybe a rich spectrum uh, of particles that decay into two J size. And of course, these are very difficult to imagine as a, a molecular state. I will discuss that a little bit uh, later. Finally, the open strangeness uh, resonances. What you see on the left is the best three, best three uh, events. The reaction is, uh, is uh, E plus E minus that goes into K plus, uh, K minus Psi. 
or k plus uh, d star d uh, of course in the in the variation uh, in the variation of, uh, of um, uh, char number equal to zero and you see there is a a, a clear peak at uh, at uh, around uh, um, 3985 and uh, that uh, uh, emerges out of, uh, of the background at Z, Z, ZCS minus, uh, which decays into DD star. And uh, LHCB uh, made in, from the decay, BDK studying uh, states uh, uh, Psi K plus Phi uh, showed that there is a, a, psi, a, a, a Psi K resonance at 40. 0.3. And the uh, um, question, uh, one can pose the question whether this is, uh, is the same as uh, um, the same as the best three, but uh, um, the, the widths are very, very different. And uh, uh, it is very unlikely this to be two, two sides of the same particle. Most likely these are two uh, two particles uh, and uh, I will discuss how you can associate with other exotic methods in the tomorrow. Now, as I said, there is no consensus yet about uh, um, what are these, how are composed these uh, states. Uh, the, um, the first uh, theory that was done, particularly about the X3872, is of a hadron molecule. That is a sort of two colored singlet states, meson, for instance, bound by exchange of uh, pions and other mesons. That is bind, bound by nuclear forces. The, the, the existence, possible existence of states like that had been uh, hypothesized uh, long before this discovery and uh, many people uh, have explored uh, this possibility and uh, found some elements to say that uh, this may be the real nature of the X3872. The, 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 this, the situation is not, not uh, uh, settled uh, uh, yet. Then there is a possibility that was raised by, by our group, uh, compact diquark, anti-diquark, in which uh, the diquarks are made by a heavy quark and a light quark, and uh, 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 bound ex exclusively by QCD forces. In other words, imagining that the quarks and anti-quarks are in a di a distances which are small with respect to the critical uh, lambda QCD uh, distance um, and, and to the critical distance of QCD. And uh, then there are other possibilities. Uh, for instance, what is called hydrocharmonium, that is uh, a, a pair of, of heavy, two heavy quarks surrounded and, and neutralized, the color neutralized by, by uh, light quarks. And this was advocated by by a group of Voloshin and by Bratton. And uh, um, in particular, Bratton has a, the CC bar pair into an eight uh, in octet uh, color. And I will discuss uh, this also um, in one of my future lectures. There is no consensus. And uh, uh, there is a, we, we wrote a, a, a review uh, book on, on these possibilities, which dis discusses all these possibilities with, uh, with written by myself, with uh, Ahmed Ali of DESI and uh, Antonello Porosa of Roma. Uh, sorry. Many theoretical methods have been used to deal with the exotic hadrons. Uh, different groups have, have used different approaches. Uh, the, the, the compact multi-quark has been explored mainly with the constituent quark model. Hadron molecules have been uh, investigated using mainly unitarity and analyticity of the, of the, of the um, S-metrics, the old times 
by which uh, people try to uh, analyze uh, uh, agronic resonances. Uh, QCD some rules, lattice QCD, which of course uh, in principle is a real exact, uh, exact uh, approach, but uh, still uh, with several uh, limitation. Uh, more recently, the Born Oppenheimer has been used by using the, similar, the similarity of uh, a state which has uh, two heavy quarks, let's say C and C bar, and two light quarks like uh, U bar and U uh, U bar, and uh, it's, it's very similar to the situation of a hydrogen molecule in which you have two heavy particles, uh, the protons, surrounded by light particles, which are the electrons. And uh, uh, we have tried to use this, uh, this analogy to, 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 uh, uh, to explore this. Of course, uh, when one speak of molecule in this case, one speak of a system in which the forces, like in atomic molecules, are the electric, the electromagnetic forces. Uh, here are the color forces, not uh, not uh, higher exchange or things like that. There have been attempts uh, to analyze uh, uh, exotic atoms in, with QCD in N colors with N equal infinity. Mm, not, not very successful, I must say, but uh, interesting as a, a possible uh, theoretical tool. And we shall see some of all these, uh, these, uh, these things in our lectures. How are produced? the exotic atoms. Well, the simplest way to produce this particle is by the decay of a B meson. Because uh, uh, remember that uh, a B quark uh, makes uh, easily a transform into a, a B bar, goes into a C bar plus a quark pair. The quark pair one of the quark pair Kabibo allowed is a CS bar. So you have naturally in the decay of the B quark, you have naturally a pair of CC bar. And then if you dress that with the uh, additional pairs uh, take out of the, of the C, uh, you can have multi-quark state recoiling against the, say the K plus. So this, the, 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 the channel B plus goes into K plus plus anything which contain a pair of charm quark is a very interesting uh, source of exotic atoms. And uh, the interesting part of the diagram which I have here is the upper, upper part. Uh, really it's the, the upper right corner, but anyway, uh, which can be specified in two ways. Uh, the, the QQ bar can pair the, the light Q with C bar and the light Q bar with C, and that makes a molecular state. Or it can pair the Q bar, light Q bar with C bar and light Q with C, and then you have a tetraquark uh, state. And uh, you have so, you have the two possible channels at the same time, and you may study uh, how, which is which. Um, and in fact, uh, a D star D bar pair with low relative momentum may form an adronic molecule due to the uh, nuclear interaction, the pion exchange, etc., between them. And this is, was the, the, the idea originally proposed by the uh, Rucula, uh, Georgia, uh, the Rucula. Georgia and, and, and Glashov, and uh, that said that in this kind of the case, you could form uh, bound states of mesons. Uh, it, it, this is very similar to how a deuteron is formed once you have a low momentum P and pair. The, the P can irradiate a photon and fall down into the potential well. Uh, made by the pion exchange and form a bound state. However, and, and this is in a similar way, uh, you can also uh, discover the pentaquark as a in, in, the, in the decay of the lambda B. It's the same story. The, the, the B quark, which is inside lambda B, 
uh, decays into charm and the pair uh, strange uh, C bar, and uh, you can have a, 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 a K, K meson formed, which is uh, your tracer, and uh, you remain with uh, a, a diquark, which was originally in the baryon, a, another light quark with a from a, a, a pair S, uh, S U bar and the CC bar quark from the BDK and you make a pentaquark. And in fact, you can make a pentaquark into two different ways. Uh, one uses as a diquark uh, the, the, the one that was in the, in the original baryon, but there is another one which uh, we understood in, in our first analysis of that, in which the diquark, which is in the baryon, is broken down and the diquark in the pentaquark is made in, in, a, in a different combination. However, as I said, in this picture, you have a possibility of having a pair of mesons, which is a, a, a relatively low energy, and then the attraction between them may form a bound state. But uh, the, the situation should be very different in cases where you form mesons uh, in, in high energy uh, collisions uh, at, at large pepper, because in this case, it would be very difficult to have the two mesons to be formed with such a low relative momentum to make a, a bound state which a very low uh, uh, low energy binding energy. And uh, from this point of view, it is very surprising that uh, the X3872 has been seen by CMS uh, with a, to be produced like uh, the Psi2S uh, more or less uh, to be produced at, at very large uh, uh, P-perp, at very large perpendicular momentum as you see from this diagram. In this diagram, we have reported not only the, uh, the cross-section for 3872 as seen by CMS in proton-proton, but we have also transformed the, the data for the production of uh, deuteron and uh, light nuclei uh, from Alice collision, lead-lead, to proton-proton cross-sections. You can do that by using various methods of, of nuclear physics. And as you can see, this shows what I was saying. I mean, light nuclei are produced less and less, a, a very steep production with PPERP, as you would expect, because uh, PPERP uh, large uh, compared with the binding energy is uh, certainly not a favorable situation. And uh, you see in this, in this uh, diagram, the great difference, which is between the production of 3872 uh, seen by CMS and the produ production of nuclei, which, uh, which are confined into a region of small uh, perpendicular momentum. Um, there has been uh, um, proposals to save the molecular picture uh, by saying that, in fact, the molecule can can mix with a charmonium. And if you, if you have a mixed state charmonium molecule, then you can produce the charmonium component and then this will appear as a full particle with also the other component of a uh, thing. I, I don't know uh, yet if this can be done. We'll come about that later. How can you generate uh, multi-quark state uh, in, uh, in QCD? Well, the, the, the mesons are, are given here, uh, classical configuration uh, as a QQ bar, and baryons have this uh, uh, string uh, uh, configuration. And uh, uh, you can see that uh, a, a QQ bar, a QQ pair, in a three bar uh, color uh, as the same characteristic as uh, an antiquark. So from, from uh, a state with uh, an antiquark, you can produce a state which uh, as uh, the antiquark 
changed into a, a QQ pair by using this analogy. And uh, the, the figure, which is uh, in, the bay, in, the, in the lower part of the slide, shows what happens to an antibarion when you transform a, a, an antiquark in the antibarion into a pair of light quarks. And you see that you can generate a configuration which is precisely that of a tetraquark. And uh, of course, uh, uh, a tetraquark like that in, in S wave, it will be a state with positive parity like uh, X and Z state. And if it is uh, in an uh, excited orbital angular momentum state, will have negative parity like the Y state. So you, you can produce the QCD uh, states like X, Y, Z with this, uh, uh, with this mechanism. You can try with, an, with two substitution. And uh, if you substitute in an antibarion two antiquarks with two pairs of quarks, you produce a pentaquark. And if you carry on the, the last substitution, you produced a state which has six quarks, but not bound as in the deuteron, like a PN, but bound in a more complicated way, which is allowed by QCD and which is called a dibarium, or was called dibarium by Jaffe long ago. So in a way, this substitution rule give you a simple way to produce uh, multi-quark states in a way that uh, uh, is uh, reasonable from the point of view of, of dy dynamics. And you can reproduce in this way all the, heavy, all the exotic atom we have seen until now and more the dibarium has not been yet seen. There is a, a new sensation which, is, uh, uh, which goes in the other, in the other way. That is, uh, if you um, have a, a, a single heavy double, double heavy quark symmetry, you can go back and you can say, well, but the, the two heavy quarks, which are in, in, in this uh, barrier like uh, thing, uh, can simulate a single uh, uh, source of color bound uh, to the other quark like quark antiquark are bound in a meson. So there is a single, a, an analogy, a symmetry in this case between states which have two heavy quarks, baryons which have two heavy quarks with, with mesons uh, which have only a quark antiquark. And uh, that uh, uh, has led to consider states with two, two charm states, not CC bar, but two charm states. This was uh, suggested by uh, uh, the Rome group, uh, Polosa and collaborator, and also by uh, Carliner et al., by Acton and Quig, and that is becoming a very interesting system uh, to study now. I can, I can skip that. Time is, is running. And uh, uh, I think I will skip also this argument. I will uh, retain this argument for the for the, the, the Weinberg criterion from the, from the, the, the latest, latest uh, next, uh, uh, next uh, lecture. But I want to go to the conclusion. The conclusion of Weinberg argument is that uh, you can describe uh, low energy pair uh, scattering of two, two particles by introducing one parameter, which is called the effective radius. And uh, we discovered in the literature a, a, a little theorem by, by, by Landau School that says that R0, the, this effective radius, has to be negative for, uh, has, has, uh, sorry, has to be positive for a molecular state. Uh, in other words, it disagrees with Weinberg criterion, which also uh, shows that uh, a negative uh, R0 is an indication of a compact state versus a positive R0, which is uh, a typical of a molecular state. Uh, a typical case of molecular is the deuteron, which is uh, reflected here, which has uh, R0 equal 1.75 Fermi and, uh, uh, and, and, and positive. But uh, we found that uh, 
x3872 uh, may have a negative uh, may have a negative radius uh, definitely and uh, there are different uh, determinations i will discuss that in the last lecture lecture there are uh, other people that say that you have to analyze in the limit of i equals zero but get in any case a, 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 a range of errors but always smaller than zero and the same thing can be done for the tetra quark so uh, this is a, a, a start of a of a application of uh, the weinberg criterion in a quantitative way that seems to point to the fact that these two exotic uh, uh, two exotic states are not molecular but we will see this better uh, uh, in the uh, in the last lecture okay this is all for now i think we can have uh, we can have uh, a, some question before i start for the second lecture thank you very much so let's thank professor maiani if there are um, any questions please unmute yourself and try to to ask hello can you hear me yes well uh, i have a question about the expected uh, versus unexpected particles uh, so why x3872 was actually unexpected it seems to be very close to uh, to the expected kc one to p Am I right? Well, well uh, so yes. Uh, when uh, it was discovered, uh, uh, the first uh, thing was that it was the, the P wave uh, excitation of a charmonium, the one that you mentioned. But uh, there are several things that uh, do not go well with that. First of all, the mass is not so, so close. It's about uh, uh, 50 MeV uh, uh, lower than the prediction, the charmonium prediction, and that was considered to be a, 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 an anomaly. The second is that uh, this charmonium state would decay quickly into with the emission of photons, and the X3872 does not decay in that way. So uh, the, the X32. Um, the, the X is really different and uh, different not only for the mass, which uh, does not fit with the mass uh, of the charmonium, but also for the decay. The, the, the scene decays of uh, X3872 are J psi two pions and J psi three pions. So it's a decay which violates isotopic spin, contrary to the all decays of charmonia, which uh, of course, uh, since they have to create the heavy the light quarks from the vacuum, they are very well isospin conserving. For instance, the, the psi 2s decays into psi 2 pion, but the two pions are in an isospin equal zero state. So, um, so this is why uh, the X3872 was classified into the unexpected charmonia. And the, it's still there. By the way, the other, the, the real charmonium uh, uh, 2P, et cetera, has not been identified yet, but uh, that's another story. Thank you. Can I have another question? Uh, so Hello? Maybe I... Hello. Hello. Uh, hello, Mr. Miami. Who's speaking? Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, I, I have. Uh, it's not a question. I want a suggestion. Uh, if uh, we are uh, trying to explain uh, heavy baryon or uh, heavy mesons from die quark model then uh, is, uh, suppose uh, i have a three quark in uh, uh, 
baryon two is lighter one is heavy for singly heavy baryon then how can we consider the uh, dike quark formation like uh, we need to consider all the possibilities like first second second third then third and first i i really didn't get the question sorry the, uh, uh, you worried about uh, the dichor production in hadron collision or indicate i indicated as uh, in uh, in bd case mesons or baryons you can produce states which have basically dichors in them i, I you saw them from the diagrams but uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, in the continuum uh, also uh, you can easily produce two quark pairs, and uh, then in 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 various com configurations, the two the, the two quarks can form a diquark, and the two anti quark can form an anti an anti diquark. This is possible, and uh, uh, for instance, even in uh, in uh, in lab, uh, one sees uh, that uh, uh, there is a frequent production of uh, two charm pairs. That that is not a problem, but. Uh, for uh, producing a diquark in BD case, I think this was the the, the diagram that I showed you in uh, in uh, here. Uh, for instance, here you see that uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, in this decay you have. Uh, you have already a diquark there in the baryon, and then you can produce another diquark by by putting together um, and, and by the, the, the making an additional pair. The s the s bar the s will go with the k minus, and the, and the, and there is another 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 quark left out. So you can have a pentaquark in this case. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other questions? If not, I, I would propose a, a break of five minutes and then we start with the second. If, uh, if uh, our chair is... Uh... Okay. Can I start? Are we there? Yes, please. Okay, so this will be about the considered quark model and masses of conventional mesons and baryons. And uh, let me start with a short introduction on how did we get to that. And, uh, the, the basic is something that we all learned in our high school, that uh, uh, there are three interactions at particle level distinguished by strength and selection rules. The strong interaction, which uh, are of order one, let's say, and conserve all the um, discrete uh, symmetries and uh, in addition, conserve a symmetry group, which is uh, SU2, the group that uh, rotates uh, complex vectors, complex two-dimensional two uh, vectors, and uh, conserve uh, another quantum number, which is called strangeness, baryon number, and typical lifetime are 10, 10 to the minus 23 seconds. Then there are the electromagnetic interactions, well known from electrodynamics, they, uh, they have a strength of uh, 137, act on hadrons and charged electrons, conserve also parity, charge conjugation, and time reversal, and, um, and, and strangeness, and electron number and baryon number. And uh, the typical lifetimes is uh, 10 to the minus 18 seconds, the lifetime of the pi zero decay into two photons. And then there are the weak interactions introduced by Fermi in 1932, uh, order 10 to the minus five, act on all particles and violate all possible uh, uh, symmetries. Parity, CP and T, and 
until now it conserved CPT. And typical lifetimes 10 to the minus 12 seconds or longer. That's a classical uh, picture. But then we go to uh, the 60s, uh, where it was found that uh, mesons and baryons are arranged into, into uh, very regular patterns. The, the, for instance, uh, baryons uh, that accompany uh, uh, neutron and proton fall into an octet. Uh, and the mesons also fall into octets. Then there are the first baryon resonances, which uh, make a complex of uh, uh, 10 particles called the decuplet, etc. All these, these that you see are uh, represent a figure that corresponds to a symmetry which is not a SU2, which, which acts on the horizontal line, changing, say, proton and neutron or pi plus and pi minus, et cetera, but uh, also connect uh, people of different uh, particles with different strangeness or hypercharge, if, if you want. And uh, th 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 this is taken from a, 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 a higher symmetry, which is uh, SU3, which, which appears, as I will show you in the next, uh, next uh, slide. Uh, the, the, the idea that uh, uh, these particles, uh, the hadrons that we see, may be made of more elementary constituents, goes back to Fermi. In Fermi Young, in 1949, wrote a paper by saying that uh, the pi mesons could be not elementary, and they could simply be made by pairs of proton, antiproton, neutron, antineutron, etc. Of course, since uh, the doublet proton and neutron is an obvious uh, basis for the SU2 symmetry. If the pi mesons are bound by nucleons, then of course they will by themselves uh, satisfy the uh, SU2 symmetry. And this is why uh, isotopic spin is introduced into the, the particle via the, the constituents. And uh, Sakata in 1956 uh, added one new constituent to account for strange particles, uh, as the, 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 the basic was a triplet, P and lambda, and therefore introduced the new symmetry, which is the symmetry of uh, uh, three-dimensional spinners, so to say, which is called SU3, of course, unitary transformations of a three-dimensional complex vector. And uh, um, mesons could all be made by SS bar, and in fact, uh, this reproduces very well the picture that we have here for pions and kaons. Because if you have a triplet, anti triplet, uh, then uh, this is it. I mean, it's a, it's a, a very natural picture. However, uh, to make baryons, you have to, uh, ha to imagine that uh, P and lambda are arranged in this way, S, S, S bar. And so you predict that there must exist baryons with a positive strangeness, which have never been seen. So already from the very beginning, it was clear that the Sakata model had some element of truth, the mesons, but failed really on the baryons. And uh, uh, that was the situation at the beginning of the 60s when I graduated. <laughs> and this is the situation that was there. And, uh, and uh, um, there were, Gelman and Neyman made a, a very bold step. They said, forget about Sakata, that is uh, the elementary constituents, but uh, take the group. They said, let's take the group SU3 as a symmetry, what are the representation? What are the multiplets of SU3 that can accommodate baryons and mesons? And they came up exactly with the octet and decuplet uh, classification of baryons, which is so successful. And uh, in addition, Gelman and Okubo derived a mass formula for octet uh, that uh, says that uh, 
is written here, and n plus psi divided by two is equal to three lambda plus sigma divided by four. And as you see, this, this uh, equation is very well satisfied approximately, but very well satisfied by the, the physical masses. And also uh, they predicted that the decuplet masses are equally spaced. So if you have delta and sigma star, then you could predict psi star and omega. And in 1962, at the Ginevra conference, the Xi star was presented. Engelmann observed that their mass checked with equal spacing group. So the omega minus remained, and it was discovered in 1964 exactly with the expected mass from the equal spacing rule. It was a triumph of the SU3 symmetry. And the people at the point believed that for obscure reasons, the uh, hadrons obey an a, a, a approximately uh, exact uh, SU3 symmetry and uh, started applying all the group theory rules to derive, uh, to derive uh, things. And this is what we young theorists uh, were doing in, in these days. Um, as I said, uh, the decuplet uh, uh, the, the equal spacing was uh, demonstrated by Gelman and Okubo. And, uh, and uh, then uh, when the Xi was discovered, it was found that uh, it checked the uh, equal spacing rule. And uh, in 1964, this event was found by Samios and co worker It's a beautiful event. You, you see a K minus, which goes into hydrogen, essentially, and uh, creates a particle which is uh, this little tiny uh, tract there called omega minus. Uh, um, the, the reaction is the K minus plus, plus a proton gives K zero plus omega minus and plus a neutron. And, uh, and uh, then uh, the omega minus decay into Xi pi and the Xi decays into lambda and pi zero and the lambda decays into pi minus proton. In this, uh, beautiful picture, you see all the decays which are predicted by the strong interaction theory. And in particular, the, the mass of the uh, observed was uh, 1672 against the prediction of Gelman of a mass 1679. It was a, the first case of a prediction of the mass of a hadron. And that was really very startling. And uh, it was that. Two years later, uh, Gelman uh, made another step. They, he went back to the Sakata model, but observed that uh, if you give a fractional charges to the quarks, the, the constituent which he called quarks, you can have uh, that baryons are made by three quarks and have always negative strangeness because uh, you attribute uh, as strange as minus one to the to the S quark, and then uh, there are no positive strangeness variants. And that was a, the first the great success. And you reproduce the octet and the decuplet, etc. So at that time, uh, Gelman could say the phrase that I told you before: variants can now be constructed from quarks by using the combinations QQQ or pentaquark while mesons are made out of QQ bar, tetraquarks, etc., And that was the great success of the quark model that not only justified SU3, but also uh, it justified the octet and the, and the, and the, and the, the decuplet rule. And um, the, the, here comes the name, uh, the um, eightfold way that uh, was given by Gelman to this uh, scheme because the baryons, the stable baryons, are in an octet and not uh, in the representation that was, uh, uh, was uh, hypothesized by Sakata. So now you can go back to, the, to, the, to our uh, sketches and you can see that you can uh, reproduce uh, these, uh, these uh, uh, SU3 uh, scheme simply by combining uh, quarks. And uh, quarks are combined uh, 
uh, three quarks are combined in a certain way in the in the in the octet in a mixed symmetry way and in a fully symmetric way in the to produce the decuplet and so similarly the variance uh, something that was uh, immediately apparent at the time was that there was something strange with the Fermi statistics because uh, if you take the resonance delta star plus plus which is in the top right top of the decuplet that is made of two of three uh, u quarks and uh, if uh, if you give a spin three half to the delta star the three quarks have exactly the same uh, value of the spin so if they are in s wave as it's uh, natural they violate the fermi statistics because you are putting uh, three fermions in a single state which is obviously impossible and uh, this uh, in the in i remember in sec in 65 was the reason for people to say well after all quarks are, are not a real object they are an imagination a mathematical imagination they don't have to obey Fermi statistics, but certain physicists were not convinced about that. Among them, Han and Nambu, and uh, later uh, Gelman and uh, Fritsch and uh, Lloyd Wheeler. And uh, this is uh, the idea that led to attribute to the quark, to the quarks, a, another quantum number, which is uh, uh, in ten and an unseen quantum numbers that makes so that the triplet of quarks of U quarks in the delta star can be anti-symmetrized. And, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, later, this was done by Hanambu uh, in, uh, in, however, with the different uh, uh, attribution of the electric charges. And the, the QCD that we know now is, uh, is uh, was uh, invented in, uh, in 72 by Gelman and co-workers co by saying that uh, this uh, quantum number does not interfere, commutes, totally commutes with, uh, with the electric, electric charge and weak interactions. And therefore the three quarks up, uh, which are in the delta plus plus have simply three different colors, red, white, and blue. And uh, uh, no, red, yellow, and blue. And, uh, and, uh, and that uh, has remained uh, um, with us as a QCD theory, the theory of strong interaction. I'm going very quickly, but, uh, but uh, and uh, uh, after, after that, you can have a, a picture which is the, 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 which replaces the first slide that I have, and this is what we were dreaming all, all the 60s, in all the year 60s, that is how to unify all interactions in a single, at least in a single mechanism. And quarks give the way to do that. There are weak interact, there are uh, electromagnetic interactions in which quarks are not transformed, but uh, uh, cap are coupled to the photon, the same way as uh, electrons and muons, and uh, ex except with fractionally charges. There are the weak interaction, the charged weak interaction, in which, uh, a, say, a D quark is transformed into a new quark. Uh, uh, um, but uh, you, you uh, remember that in the Kabibo theory, that it is not the D quark, but it's the Kabibo D, which is transformed into up by interaction with the W, but uh, with the uh, Glashovilopos and myself, we understood that there had to be another quark to couple with this, with this Kabibo strange quark, the orthogonal combination, and then there will be another Kobayashi-Maskawa uh, combination which couple the B mixed with, with the S and D to the T quark. And that's a, a description of the charged currents. The neutral currents are diagonal as, uh, as do uh, as the electromagnetic current and the, and the and they are mediated by a neutral lepton called Z0. <clears throat> and uh, of course, the, the G mechanism solves the possible violation of strangeness in this reaction. And then finally, quark interaction 
uh, strong interaction are similarly mediated by eight gluon, which are the particles associated with the SU3 color and uh, uh, transform um, with a typical coupling, which is uh, that uh, a quark with color I goes into a quark with color J by a matrix, three by three matrix uh, TA. And there are eight such matrices, and this is a SU3 color. So you see now, this is essentially the standard model. <laughs> standard mode, except for the Higgs boson, this is the standard mode. QCD, uh, I, I wrote this slide long ago. Uh, QCD is the answer to almost any question. In fact, it, it, it answered an enormous amount of problems that came out in the 60s, etc. The first, the most important property of QCD is to be asymptotically free. You can see here an old transparency by Guido Altarelli in 1989, after the success of LEP, that showed the, the, the behavior of the uh, uh, SU3 coupling constant as a function of uh, uh, square momentum uh, 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 at LEP. And uh, it showed uh, with large errors, clearly what we know we, we call asymptotic freedom, the property of a gauge theory, which was discovered by Gross and Wilczek and by uh, Politz. But uh, with LHC, if you go on the right hand side, we have a much better uh, determination of uh, alpha strong. And uh, you can see the beauty of uh, this diagram with uh, uh, asymptotic freedom shown there. Um, QCD therefore is asymptotically free, quarks carry the color symmetry and are confined inside color singlet hadrons. And uh, you can produce the delta plus plus tau by antisymmetrizing over the color indices, the T quarks. And Fermi statistics is obeyed. In fact, uh, this is a real important characteristic of, of uh, uh, QCD. QCD assumes that all the hadrons that can be formed are color singlets. In other words, color is confined inside the hadrons. I must say that this is, uh, was already guessed by Han and Nambu, the first uh, um, uh, theory of an internal SU3 uh, symmetry. And uh, there is no proliferation of particles with this symmetry. The, there is only one delta plus because it's the only one, it's the only combination with the, with the three quarks in a color singlet that you can do with three quarks. Uh, um, a proton arrest has only three quarks dressed by strong QCD interactions. If you analyze the proton at uh, increasing Q square, the quarks radiate gluons. This is the so-called Altarelli Parisi picture of scaling violation. And the large Q square, we see quarks and neutral gluons as uh, almost free particles. And this is the Bjorn scaling that we see in the Pinanasi scattering. How can you obtain uh, uh, confinement? Well, this is a, a cartoon which illustrates ideas that are there. And the, the idea is that uh, although in, uh, in perturbation theory, you can imagine the line of forces between a quark and a quark as the line of forces of, ele uh, of electricity between uh, a, a charge plus and charge minus, uh, the, the in, re in reality, uh, a non-abelian uh, <coughs> gauge theory the, the line of forces condensate into strings. And the strings can be can, they join a, 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 a triplet color to an anti-triplet color in such a way that the two make a color singlet. Now, if you give a kick to the meson and try to separate the quark from the anti-quark, the string uh, increases in energy. But when the energy of the string becomes equal to the mass of a pair of quarks, the strings breaks into two uh, pairs 
And so you see that you can never be able to separate the quarks from the anti-quarks. This is not more than a, a, a cartoon, but uh, you can try to 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 to. There is no no real in, in my my view. There is no real no real demonstration of that. But uh, the idea is that if a, a, a gauge theory is exact, this is what will happen. Now, Han and Nambu went a little further and they tried to describe the force we now say of, of acts on quarks by two gluons, by a, a gluon exchange. And of course, in perturbation theory, you would have a, 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 this amplitude would be G square over K square, the momentum, uh, the, the, momentum uh, the transfer momentum multiplied by the product of the two charges. Now these are non-abelian charges. The A are summed over A. And uh, this is uh, uh, now uh, you can reduce uh, this, uh, this quantity Ta of one quark times Ta of the other quark by, two, by the square of uh, the Tq plus Tq bar. Is it just... Uh, this is just the, 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 the mixed product of the square. And the, the, the terms of the square are written here, C2 of representation R minus C2 of representation three minus C2 of representation three bar, where C2 is the so-called quadratic Casimir operator, is the invariant operator that you can construct by squaring T like uh, S square when you square the spin is uh, the invariant uh, uh, under color transformation. And uh, in this, in this uh, table, I gave you the, the, the quadratic Casimir operators for R equal one, the singlet in which it is obviously zero, for eight, the octet in which it is three, and for t three or three bar in which it is four thirds, and six, it is 10 thirds. Now, if you have a quark and take quark in the singlet, you see that in the singlet, this combination of Casimis makes minus four thirds. So it's attractive. Uh, it, it is, if, if, you are, if they are in the octet, it makes plus one six. So it's repulsive. So that says that already at the, at the, at the lowest perturbation level, uh, there is attraction for quark and take quark in the color singlet and the repulsion in the color octet. So that's a, a very good uh, starting point for, for confinement. If you have quark quark, you have, uh, they can form a, a three bar in the anti-symmetric combination or a six in the symmetric combination. And uh, the three bar is attractive, minus two thirds, and uh, in the six is repulsive plus one third. So a quark and a quark pairs binding color singlet mesons. If you have two diquarks, they can, uh, if you have one diquark, it can bind to another quark to make a color singlet variant, but also it can also uh, uh, couple to an antiquark to make a color singlet tetraquark. And, uh, the, the, the channel in which this coupling happens are, is uh, by putting quark quark into the three bar in the antisymmetric combination. So you have a, a hierarchy of couplings by which you can imagine how uh, putting together many quarks, uh, they would form color singlets, which is of course the basic rule. The constituent quark model uh, arises out of that. It was uh, already invented by Sakharov and Zeldovich in the old days where color was not known, but it was uh, uh, specified better in QCD by the Rukula, Georgiai, and Glashov to study the spectrum of uh, mesons and baryon in presence of charm. And uh, it was revisited by us by as, a, as an exercise for 
studying the tetra quarks. And uh, you can find a, a very nice introduction in the book by George I here, The Algebras in Particle Physics, which is a very uh, useful and uh, uh, rather elementary introduction to all that. So the color screen forces, those that really bind the quark, anti quarks, etc., produce an overall spin independent potential that confines quarks inside a definite volume with some wave function. But then there is a residual quark anti quark interaction, which is a color magnetism, like uh, it happened in, in quantum electrodynamics. That is, you have a forces which have uh, the form of the product of the two charges, color, product of the spin, and uh, a delta function which, uh, uh, for, which uh, 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 forces the two things to be in the same point. And uh, the coefficient of that is uh, g square, the color, the color, uh, the color um, coupling constant, divided by the product of the masses of the two things. And uh, uh, this is the basic formula to analyze what happens inside a baryon or inside a meson. You you have uh, um, an interaction Hamiltonian, which is uh, the one that is here in, in blue. And uh, if the two particles, the two quarks or antiquarks are in a definite color, uh, color uh, representation, then of course this product T1 dot T2, like we saw in the previous transparency, is, uh, is uh, expressed as a function of the cutting it. And you have only the spin to deal with. And, uh, and, um, and the psi, psi of zero will, will force you to give to, to put there the wave function at the same point uh, of there. So this will be the, the Hamiltonian of uh, um, a pair of quarks or, or a quark and an anti-quark inside a radron. You have uh, uh, the, the, the forces that will make force the confinement. And then on top of that, you have spin-spin forces acting in this way. The, in this formula, you can develop to first order in the small mass differences the denominator. And so you will have another, another first order contribution to SU3 breaking from the difference ms minus m up in addition to the mass difference. Originally, Gelman thought that uh, the, 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 the mass differences inside the NSU3 multiplet were simply due to the mass, to the difference in mass of the, uh, the, the quark. But if that is simply related to the quark composition, you would not be able to explain the difference in mass between the lambda baryon and the sigma zero baryon, because they have all two light quark and one strange quark. So their mass should be equal. But uh, if you add this spin-spin interaction, you see that uh, there will be an additional term which contains uh, the mass difference between up and strange quark related to the total spin of the party of the pair of the quarks. And the total spin of the pair of the light quarks is zero in the lambda and one in the sigma zero. And that explains the, the mass difference between lambda and sigma zero. This was found already by, by Zeldovich, et cetera, and was confirmed by Glashow et al. Uh, you will see how it works in, in, uh, in the next uh, transparency. And uh, I can anticipate that it works very well, perhaps too well, because it's a very naive picture. You have uh, quark treated as a massive object, uh, the, the, the Hamiltonian is made by the mass of this particle, so there are mass difference between S and charm, etc. And then there are the spin-spin interaction, which produce additional uh, mass differences. And uh, uh, you will see how it works, uh, uh, this thing, uh, very, very quickly. For the mesons, for the mesons is very simple. You have uh, pi, Q, Q bar in S wave with J equals zero. 
for the spin, total spin is zero. And rho and omega, q q bar in S way with j equal one. Now, if you have a, a term S q one dot S q two, you can express that as the, the, the square of S one plus S two minus S one square minus S two square. And you compute that and it gives plus one half for j equal one and the minus three half for j equal zero. And therefore, m pi will be twice the mass of the q I'm, I'm taking up and down quark with the same mass, called m q, minus three half k q q. But for the rho and omega, it will be two m q plus one half k q q. In this way, you can then treat uh, the cases of QS bar mesons, K and K star, and SS bar vector mesons of phi. Eta is, is a mix, is a, is a method that I will not consider. And you will find a similar formula to that. Uh, and of course, you have uh, here KSQ, which is the, the speed spin coupling of a strange to the light quark. And then in the phi, you have SS, which is a <coughs> strange, the couple of strange uh, quark to strange quark spin spin. Now comes the, the famous uh, formula in which uh, you develop the denominator, the denominator one over ms uh, uh, as a one over mq minus the difference and expand the denominator. And then you 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 uh, you find the relation between kappa s q and kappa s s, which is given here. Uh, that uh, uh, kappa s s minus kappa q q is twice kappa s q minus kappa q q, and therefore you get a very simple formula uh, from from this uh, complex that says that uh, the rho mass is equal to the omega mass, which is not so. so Three, and you get that the difference between phi and k star is equal to the difference between k star and rho. So rho, k star, and phi are e equal spaces. That's the rule that comes out of this simple uh, 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 constituent quark model. And uh, this is very, very well obeyed. Uh, um, the, the phi minus k star is under 28 MeV and k star minus rho is under 17. So they are within 10, 10 MeV, they are, uh, the, the is obeyed. And now, if you go to the, to the, sorry, if you now go to the, to the baryons, in the baryons, the, your Hamiltonian is uh, three, these the three masses, which for proton and neutron are, are all equal, three and Q. And then you have uh, a one kappa, but you have different combination of the of the of the uh, spin, SD minus a, SU1 plus SU2, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And you can work out that by uh, finding the Casimir of the different things, and you find that the mass of the nucleon is 3mq minus 3 half kappa qq. And you can go along a similar way for the other particle in which you have a, a strange quark and a strange strange for the xi and in the end you obtain exactly the gelman okubo relation also in this way it's very, which is very important but you now have another point which is that uh, if you take the mass of the delta, this is the same as before for three light quark, except that now the spins are in, di in different position. And you find that uh, the mass of the delta is uh, three mq plus three half kqq. So you can separate mq from kappa qq, and you can now compute the, all the decoupled masses in terms of non parameters. And this gives you the equal spacing rule. Uh, with uh, this, uh, the equal spacing now is 139 
MEV, and that gives you uh, this experimentally. These three mass differences are 153, 145, 142. So you see that they are in the real of this thing. So with respect to SU3, you have obtained one thing more with the constituent quark model. You have obtained all what was uh, specified by the SU3 symmetry, broken to first order, plus a relation that relates the mass of the equal spacing rule in the decuplet to the masses of the baryons and the delta. And that is a, is a, is a, is the, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, this. This is the, the, the mass difference, which is predicted uh, 139 equal 153, which is uh, uh, the same quality as the Okubo mass order. I don't want to go on more than that because uh, you will see with the, with the Piloni tomorrow uh, uh, the, how all this work and uh, uh, you are invited to to get familiar with that, which is a simple algebra, but very useful. And uh, now go to the spectroscopy of charmed mesons and baryons, which have been discovered uh, in these years. And uh, I go directly to the, the, the analogous of the, of the graphs I showed you before. Now, of course, for instance, take charm. If you consider mesons with uh, one, charm quark or, or zero one, you have a, 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 char, a charm equal zero, you have the octet, which we had before, but now the states which contain one charm have uh, one charm and uh, either one quark or an anti-quark. So you have a three when you have C bar and one quark, and you have a three bar when you have a C and then take work. And these are uh, uh, different floors according to the number of charm quarks, minus one, zero, and one. For baryons is a similar thing. A charm equal zero, you have the octet of the baryons. But if you go to, to charm equal one, you have uh, one charm and two quarks. And the two quarks can be in a symmetric and an anti-symmetric flavor combination. So you have a six plus three bar. And so you have in total nine uh, states. I think uh, more or less that they have been uh, observed. And uh, then if you have two charm quarks, you remain with only one light quark. So you have a triplet. And uh, this is the top of the uh, thing. The, the extension of the decuplet requires all the, all the light quarks to be in symmetric state. So you have zero charm, you have the decuplet that we have seen before. Now, when you go to, to one floor, you have a, a six uh, because the two, the two quark, light quark must be in a symmetric way. Then you have two charm and therefore you have a triplet because you have only one light quark. And then you have the omega plus plus CCC, which is the top of the, of the pyramid, which has, has no light quark and has three charm uh, quarks, like the omega minus, which had three strange quarks. So these are the things, not all of the, the baryons uh, which are in this uh, thing have been seen. But uh, what has been seen is uh, the, 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 the Xi CC, uh, um, pro presumably the spin one half case, uh, the, the, the Xi CC uh, with, sorry, the Xi CC, no, it's, it's up, up here, uh, it's the up, the, 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 the particle which has two charm quarks and one, uh, and one uh, light quark. This has been seen by LACB. Uh, uh, recently, and uh, we, we know that. But of course, there must be a similar one with spin three half, which has not been seen. So there is a still a spectroscopy to be to be determined. I think uh, ah, this is my last slide. What happens if you repeat uh, the the case uh, of uh, 
of uh, the vector bezel uh, by by taking the d d d star and d uh, s. Of course, you simply replace it, the formula we gave for mesons with one unit of strangeness the meson with one unit of uh, of uh, um, charm and uh, and uh, uh, you find a certain combination which are essentially differ only for the strange of the mass of the light quark and the strange quark so you would expect to find from those exactly the same value for ms minus mq uh, that you have found from the vector mesons, and uh, you don't really find so. You find uh, uh, that uh, for the for the k star k uh, rho pi etc. You find the mass difference 177, and here you find a smaller one. And uh, similarly for the b meson, you find a smaller value. And uh, this is a, a, in a way a breaking of the uh, constituent quark model which uh, sub-authors like uh, Karliner and Rosner attribute, presumably rightly so, to the fact that if you insert a heavy quark into the others, you deform the, 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 the QCD field. And so you will have an additional interaction, additional values for the <coughs> constituent quark mass. In other words, the mass of the strange quark in presence of a charged quark and in, in only presence of light quarks turns out to be different. And uh, they try to, to extrapolate this to the case of two charm quark, but uh, this is still in the, in, the, in, the, in the realm of speculation. I want to conclude this by giving you a, a table, which is very interesting because uh, as I said, you have only these parameters, which are the mass of the quarks and the spin-spin interaction of the quarks or quark at the quark, either in singlet for the mesons or in three bar for the variance. And this is what you find. Now, the interesting thing, take for instance, the first two lines, these are the masses of the quark Q, light, strange, charm, and beauty. From the mesons and from the baryons. They are not exactly the same. They are slightly different. And this is not difficult to understand because, uh, as I said, the QCD field in the meson and in the baryons are different. And so there will be some contribution to the mass of the constituents which come from that. It's difficult to compute. We don't know how to compute. However, note this regularity that if I consider the, the difference ms minus mq from the meson masses and from the baryon masses, they come to be very similar. In other words, the difference 308 for 84 is about 80 MeV and, uh, and, uh, and um, no, sorry is about 180 MeV, and the difference between 540 and 362 is very similar. So the, the mass, the difference ms minus mq is uh, very similar for those, and this uh, can be justified, we will see in one of the uh, next, uh, <coughs> next uh, lectures, how we can justify that. And uh, Instead, the difference of kappas between uh, Q, Q bar in the singlet and uh, Q, Q bar in the triplet and C, Q bar in the triplet are very different. The spin-spin interaction, of course, is very different. And it is very different because of two facts. The first is that the masses of Q, Q bar are small and the masses you remember are in the denominator. So if you replace one quark light with a charm, you lose a factor of five or, or so. And, uh, and also the fact that there is a color factor, which is uh, different. If QQ bar are in a singlet, 
and the uh, and CQ are in a three bar. There is a factor of two in the one gluon exchange, which favors a QQ bar. So it, it, it happens that in similar conditions, these two uh, two spin-spin uh, interactions are very different and are in favor of the QQ bar interaction. We'll come back to that uh, when discussing the tetraquarks. Um, the, the, the other, the, the last line show you uh, the, 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 the ratios between QQ bar in one and in three bar. And uh, this it should be only depending from the color factor, which is two. And uh, you see that the, 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 these ratios are really not equal to two, but for light quark, they are not so different from two. And now then they deviate uh, widely for heavy quarks. And uh, the, the rule that uh, the K are uh, inversely proportional to the product of the masses um, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is uh, here and here. Uh, Kij multiplied by Mi and Mj are reported in the last line for mesons. And uh, you see that uh, this number uh, should be constant. And uh, for light quarks is approximately constant, then it deviates from the constant with the, for very heavy quarks and uh, similarly for the baryon. So I think that uh, as a qual qualitative, uh, this formula that we consider for a spin-spin interaction for a couple of quarks or couple of antiquarks is uh, roughly correct, but of course there are deviations. However, the, it is possible to describe a complicated spectrum of mesons and baryons with a very small number of parameters as is shown by this table. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Are there questions? Elena? Are you uh, still there? Thank you. Thank you for these very beautiful lessons. Uh, there are any questions from the students? And tomorrow, um, uh, Alessandro Pilloni will elaborate on this calculation. So if you, if you want more explanation, we will come back to that. OK. Don't be scared. Okay, if uh, there are no, no any other questions, let's thank the speaker and uh, see, you to, uh, see you tomorrow in the morning mm -hmm. and then again in the afternoon. Okay, see you tomorrow. Uh, with, bye -bye. Uh, with Professor Maiani, but uh, in a few minutes, uh, we will start the new lessons with the Professor Ringwald. So, thanks, Luciano. Many thanks. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.